Hello and welcome to this history tutorial on how Hitler became Chancellor of Germany. This is for Edexcel GCSE Weimar and Nazi Germany. Today we will cover the political situation in 1932 and how political developments in this year led to the appointment of Hitler as Chancellor in January 1933. As 1932 began, the Weimar Republic was crippled by economic problems. The Chancellor, Heinrich Brunin, was struggling to make the constitution of the Republic work. The Reichstag didn't meet very often and Brunin relied increasingly on Article 48 to pass laws. Remember, this was meant to be an emergency power, but Brunin used it 66 times in 1932 alone. However, Hitler was far from coming to power. In the general elections of 1930, the Nazi party won 107 seats in the Reichstag. This was its largest ever number to that point, but it was only a small proportion of the 577 seats available. The Nazis had only received 18% of the votes. Their fierce rivals, the Communist Party, had polled 13% and the moderate Social Democrat Party had polled 25 Despite this, within a year, in January 1933, Hitler became Chancellor. How did this happen? Presidential elections were held in 1932. Hindenburg's term in office was coming to an end and despite him now being 84 years of age, he was persuaded to stand for re-election in an attempt to bring some stability to the Weimar Republic. Hitler also decided to stand in the presidential elections and when the results were announced, neither had achieved the number of votes needed, so the election was re-held in April. Hitler campaigned furiously, travelling around the country via plane to deliver speeches and the SA were used to parade in support of the Nazis. Despite the efforts of Hitler, Hindenburg won 53% of the votes in the April elections and became the president of the Weimar Republic once more. However, Hindenburg's re-election did not bring about the stability that was hoped for. Chancellor Brunin in April had made two key decisions which led to his resignation in May 1932. Brunin firstly banned the SA and SS as they were genuine fears in Germany that a civil war was about to break out due to the amount of violence and lawlessness on the streets. He also announced a plan to buy land from large landowners and use this to house the unemployed. These decisions united the right wing against Brunin and meant that he lost any hope of gaining the majority support of the Reichstag. Hindenburg, as a landowning conservative, was also against these policies and without the support of the President or the Reichstag, Brunin resigned his post on the 30th of May 1932. At this point, Hindenburg was persuaded by a high-ranking army general, Kurt von Schleicher, to appoint a new Chancellor. Von Schleicher had been organising a coalition of right-wing supporters which consisted of landowners, industrialists and army officers and he suggested to Hindenburg that ex-general Franz von Papen, a friend of Hindenburg's, should be given the role of Chancellor. This group did not have majority support in the Reichstag, at this stage the Social Democrats were the majority, but von Schleicher suggested to Hindenburg that if they could persuade the Nazi party to join this coalition that von Schleicher had created, that they would be able to govern without the Reichstag and just use Article 48. This went completely against the spirit of the Weimar Republic. Von Papen therefore became the Chancellor on the 30th of May 1932 following the resignation of Brunin and the work of Schleicher and Hindenburg. Schleicher had assumed that von Papen would be able to control the Nazis, saying they were merely children who needed to be led by the hand. For the first time, the Nazis were part of the government of Germany. Von Papen's new government was in trouble from the start. In July there were elections to the Reichstag. Once again, campaigning caused violence in the streets. In all, about 100 people were killed and 7,000 injured. When the results were announced, the Nazis had won 230 seats. They were now the largest party in the Reichstag. Hitler demanded von Papen was sacked and that he was made Chancellor. However, Hindenburg refused. To Hindenburg, Hitler was a vulgar, jumped-up corporal, and as a result, von Papen clung to office. He called new elections to be held in November 1932, hoping the Nazi share of the vote would fall. In November 1932, the number of Nazi seats did fall to 196, but they were still the largest party in the Reichstag. Von Papen's gamble had not paid off. At this point, von Schleicher turned on von Papen and persuaded Hindenburg to remove him as Chancellor. Hindenburg was struggling to find a strong government, but still refused to make Hitler Chancellor. Von Schleicher had told Hindenburg that the November election results showed support for the Nazi party was fading. In desperation, Hindenburg appointed von Schleicher as Chancellor. Von Schleicher's chancellorship had no real political support. 
With Hitler and the Nazis now against him, von Schleicher was unable to govern. In the face of this, von Schleicher asked Hindenburg to suspend the constitution and make him head of a military dictatorship. Hindenburg refused. Von Papen warned Hindenburg of the threat of a military coup and suggested they make Hitler Chancellor and himself Vice-Chancellor. Von Papen believed that Hindenburg and himself could make all the decisions and use Hitler as merely a figurehead of government. Von Papen said that within two months we will have pushed Hitler so far into the corner that he'll squeak like a mouse. The ageing president finally agreed. Hitler was legally appointed as Chancellor of Germany on the 30th of January 1933. In summary, it is clear that Hitler became Chancellor due to a range of factors, including his personal appeal, the policies and organisation of the Nazi Party, the economic collapse of 1929-33 and the long-standing weaknesses of the Weimar Republic. But we also know that Hindenburg, von Schleicher and von Papen also had their roles. To get further help, visit history.outward.com, see your teacher in school, or check out quiz.outward.com for those sweet revision quizzes. You can also follow the Outward Humanities team on Twitter at OGAT Humanities. Until next time, that was a little bit of history.